In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a really simple modal pop-up using JavaScript. Hi, this is James from Junior Develop Central and welcome to this tutorial about making a simple modal pop-up using JavaScript. Just before we start, if you have a second, don't forget to subscribe to support the channel and for any future video updates. Okay, so let's dive in and take a look at what you're going to be building today. So I've created a, a simple template page here and it's basically got one uh, call to action button on there, which when you click it actually opens up a modal pop-up. And this consists of the overlay. So we've got this dark background here, which uh, prevents you from clicking on any of the uh, items underneath it. And also we've got the contents of the modal itself. Uh, and if we click on either the uh, cross button here to close the modal, um, or just actually fill in the form, for example. And either click, either hitting enter or clicking the submit button will actually close the modal for us. So it's a really simple action. All you've got to do really is create a few elements and then just make them display uh, when you click on the button and obviously hide them when you click one of the actions to close the modal. But it's obviously a really common thing that you'll see on a lot of websites and you don't necessarily need to rely on any third party plugins to do this. It's quite simple to code it yourself as you'll see as we go through the tutorial. So there's a link to this, the base project uh, in the description below. So if you want to open that up in CodePen to follow along, or you can open up your text editor and do this locally if you want to as well. And you'll also find the completed project in the description too. So, so if you want to dive in and take a look at the code straight away, uh, feel free to go ahead and look at that. So let's make a start by going to our base project and creating our JavaScript modal. So here we are in our starter project and you can see that uh, clicking on the button doesn't do anything at the moment. And there's only really two parts to doing this uh, modal in JavaScript and there isn't actually a lot of JavaScript that we need. What we'll actually do is create some HTML content that will have our modal contents uh, and then put a bit of styling around that to make sure that it appears uh, as you would expect modal to appear. And then all we'll do with our JavaScript is actually literally hide and show the modal when we click the buttons. So this is a good example of not really doing any of the heavy lifting with JavaScript. We're literally just providing a bit of interactivity with it, but all the content is inside our HTML and CSS. So let me just take you through very quickly the structure of the page that we've got at the moment, just so you understand what we've got already on the page in the template. Um, so we've just got one section, which is a hero section, and uh, there's just a couple of bits of titles and some nav elements. Uh, they don't actually do anything, but um, just to make it look uh, as though a normal web page would to give our modal a little bit of context. And you can see here we've just got a button and at the moment uh, there's not very much uh, going on with it. It's just got the text inside it, but we have applied some styling already to it. And in terms of the styling itself, um, there's a few things just to be aware of. Uh, I've created a couple of variables for the color and I've also loaded in uh, normalize into the page just so everything gets reset and appears uh, as you would expect it consistently across browsers. And we've created a container and inside our hero, there's the background image and also the nav elements, uh, which we've just styled uh, some list items and set it to display at either end of the container. And then finally, in the contents, we've just literally got in here some alignment uh, and also some styling around the button. As you can see, it uh, changes color when you hover over it. OK, so that's a quick look around what we've got in the template already. But let's crack on and start adding our modal content. Uh, so I'm actually just going to put this outside of the uh, hero section that we've created and you'll, you'll see why the relevance of that shortly. Uh, but I'm just going to create a div with a class of modal and I'm just assigning it that class at the moment so I can target it afterwards um, with some CSS. So this modal will actually contain the whole overlay as well. So I'm going to put another div inside it uh, and I'm just going to give it a class of modal contents. I'm just using the uh, BEM note notation to denote that this is inside of our uh, parent modal container. And in here, this will be where the, the form or the whatever text you want to display in your modal will, ap will appear. So I'll just say, uh, please enter your email address to find out more. And then beneath that, we'll create a form. We don't necessarily want it to do anything at this point, um, but what I will do is uh, put an input uh, inside there, uh, which will be an email, and give it a placeholder, and just say your best email, perhaps. And then finally, the last thing we need is a submit button, and you can call this anything you like, but just uh, but I'll just leave it as submit for the moment. 
And when that content's loaded into the page, you'll see that actually appearing at the bottom after our section. Uh, and that's perfectly fine because um, the obviously it appears after the section in the markup, um, but we haven't actually positioned this anywhere at the moment. So uh, because of the document flow, it will actually appear after the hero section. Okay, so if you remember from the original, that was pretty much all the content that we had in the modal when it popped up. So now we can start styling it like it appeared in the first example I showed you. So let's hop over to our CSS, and I'm actually using uh, SCSS here. So I can use things like variables and nested elements inside our content. So I'm actually just going to open up another block for the modal uh, content that we created a second ago. And what I'll actually do is I'm going to take this uh, content out of the document flow. Um, so to actually put it at the top of the page. And we do that by just assigning it with a new positioning value, which is absolute. And then I can then specify where I want it to appear and by specifying at the top of the page. And you can see here the text obviously is overlaying at the moment, um, but you can see that we've taken it out of the flow. It's not appearing after the section now. Uh, it's actually appearing at the top overlaid on that page. And that's essentially what we're trying to do with the modal is to create an overlay. So it overlaps the other content and makes it uh, more prominent for the user to click. Okay, so I'm going to add a bit of uh, layout here now to actually make sure that this modal content appears in the center of the page. And so the way I'm going to do that is, first of all, I'm just going to make sure it's got a 100% height and 100% width of the page. Then I'm going to set the display property to flex, which basically turns the modal content into a flex box. And I'll actually say uh, justify the content which is uh, similar to alignment or text align, and put that in the center. And you can see the uh, text box is now in the center, and I will also say align items uh, to the center too. So this is kind of like the vertical alignment. And you can see now that the content in the modal is appearing in the center of the page. So if you look at our HTML markup, you'll see that the next thing we've got inside our modal is the modal contents. So I'm going to add some styling to that to actually give us that white box uh, that holds the uh, information to display to the user. And so I'll just target the contents uh, div element that we created. And let's set the background color of that to white. So now we can see our information a little bit clearer. And let's just add some padding so that it uh, pushes everything apart. So two rem on the top and bottom and four on the left and right. Yep, that gives us quite a nice uh, layout and spacing around the content. Uh, so uh, the actual uh, email box and uh, the submit button don't actually look too bad that way, but I'm gonna put it as I had in the original example and layer them one on top of the other. So first of all, inside the contents, I'm going to target the uh, email box. So I'm just literally selecting uh, the input via its type attribute and let's set the width of that to 100% and let's put a bit of padding inside the box too um, just half a rem probably should do for that but obviously you can play around with these settings and get it to look how you wish uh, for your project so the other thing I'm going to do is target the button inside there as well and we'll also give that a width of 100% give it the same amount of padding just so it matches up I'm actually going to change the background color of that and I already have a variable called primary that uh, holds that blue color in there uh, and also let's get rid of the border and I'm going to change the color to white for the text and I might as well add that hover transition in there as well that we had on the other button on the page so let's say 0.3 seconds and ease and then for the hover pseudo class let's change the background color to the primary darker color okay so it's styled as we had it before and I've just misspelled background there as well. So let's put the extra G in. And you can see now that, that hover effect is working. Maybe we'll just put the uh, cursor as a uh, pointer as well, just so it looks like you can actually click it. There we go. We've got the hands now appearing when we hover over that. So you can see we've got our form as it is and with our button. Um, and the, the one thing that's missing from there is the X uh, that we had on the original design. So let's go and add that in there. I'm actually going to just put this in as an element. So there's probably better ways that we could add in a close button in here. So if you loaded in some fonts or you had an image, um, but just for simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna add in another div here and it will be uh, a class of modal close bar. So it's another element inside our modal contents. And we'll just put inside there a span uh, with the content of X. And so let's just move that over to the right place where we want it to appear in our modal contents. 
So I'm going to target the close bar element that we just created. So close bar, and I'm going to set the display again to flex, and also set the justify content to uh, flex end. And just spell content correctly there as well. So you can see that's just pushed it over to the right hand side of our div element. And as I said, there's probably better ways that we could do this, but just uh, it's not a crucial part of the pop up uh, for this example. So I'm just going to push it over with some margin uh, just so it appears in that, in the, it'll be in the padding side of the uh, modal contents that we've created and just lift it up a little bit as well. And the final thing is I'll just set the cursor of that. Uh, to pointer as well so that'll just make sure that it looks like you can actually click on it but obviously clicking on it at the moment doesn't do much so that's pretty much all we need to do for our modal um, this, it doesn't look too bad just as it is at the moment so um, it does help we've got a fairly dark background in our template um, but if you're working on something lighter or you might think that people are going to get confused like you can see here the white um, from the text underneath kind of bleeding into the modal so we need some way to kind of lift it off the page so that it uh, uh, doesn't interfere with the actual content of the site so probably the best way to do that is just to add a, a background color um, that's basically uh, transparent and you could play around with some different uh, colors here but I'm just going to go for a, a black color with a fairly uh, heavy alpha value here so uh, obviously if it was one you wouldn't see anything behind there which you might want <laughs> but uh, let's go for 0 0.8 which uh, basically gives us a little bit of transparency so we can still see some of the content um, but you can definitely see where the modal is and it's distinguished between the actual page content and the modal itself so there we've got the content of our modal created, but obviously this is loading up on page load at the moment, so we don't really want to do that. Uh, we want to make sure that it's hidden until the user clicks a particular button. So we're going to do this by adding a, another additional class to the modal uh, div element, and that will have a class of dash dash hidden. And all I'm going to do is set the uh, display property of the element to none. And if we just go back to our HTML markup, uh, and if we just add modal hidden onto that element, you'll see when the page refreshes, it actually removes the modal for us. And if we take it away one more time, the modal comes back. So this is the action that we're going to use uh, via JavaScript to actually trigger and remove our modal. It's literally just a case of toggling this class on and off which if you've done some JavaScript before and you've kind of come across uh, the ability to toggle classes on elements, you'll know isn't really a difficult thing to do. So let's finish off our project by adding in the JavaScript to handle that toggling. So I'm going to create a function just called toggle modal. Uh, and this will be an arrow function that basically just all it does is toggle that class on and off as I was doing manually a second ago. So let's first of all uh, select the modal element. And I can do that by querying for the dot modal class within our page. And what I will do is just call its class list and actually toggle the, and if you remember it was the modal dash dash hidden class that we had to add or remove to actually show the modal. So now this toggle modal function will actually select the modal element and just toggle on and off the modal dash dash hidden class. So I'm going to create an event listener on the first button that we had on our page. So I'm just going to first of all access that. So document query selector. And I don't think there was an actual element uh, ID or class on that as we started, which there isn't. So let's just uh, give that an ID of show modal, for example. And so in here, we can target that ID now. So this will basically return that element. And we can add an event listener. And we want to listen for click events. And when we receive one of those click events, what do we want to do? Well, we just want to toggle the modal. So we can just pass in that function and that will be called when the show modal button is clicked. Okay, so let's try that out. And if we click the button, yeah, so we can see that class has been added, which is now showing the modal. Uh, unfortunately, we can't actually close it at this point because we haven't added any of the other event listeners on. So let's sort that out now. Uh, we're going to query uh, for 
the submit button first of all and did we set up uh, an id on there uh, we did not so let's just uh, give that an id of submit for example and of course you can change these to suit the project that you're working on so uh, when we actually receive the submit button uh, let's just add another event listener onto that and of course we're listening for click events and again we want to toggle the modal Actually, what might be a good idea for this is because we've got a form inside of here, um, let's actually add this ID onto the form. And we'll just call it um, Learn More because that's the idea behind the uh, button when we're clicking it. So this is the Learn More form. So let's access that element. So this will actually get us the form element now. And so we don't want to listen to click events, we want to listen to uh, submit events. And I'm just going to capture the uh, event object that gets created when that uh, occurs. And so inside the callback, I'll just say event uh, prevent default. So that'll stop the form from submitting because we don't know what we want to do at this point. We might want to call some more JavaScript to uh, capture that email from the form, for example. Uh, but what we do want to do as well is toggle the modal to actually close it again. Uh, and this time I'll use parentheses after the toggle modal uh, simply because uh, we actually want to call the function rather than passing a reference to it. Okay, so let's see if we can open the modal, which we can, and let's see if we can close it, uh, which we can. So uh, if we were to fill out the form, for example, and just hit the enter button on the keyboard, that actually submits the form. So that, that's why I went back and actually put the ID onto the form rather than the button. Because uh, if we listen for the submit event, we can capture both of those cases in terms of whether we click the button or hit enter when we submit the form. Okay, so last event listener that we want to set up is for the X to close the modal if we want to cancel it, for example. So I'll say uh, document query selector and we created an element inside there which was modal close bar and there was also the span which hold, held the x so we want to listen to the click event there when that happens we want to toggle the modal again let's just open that up so you can see that a bit better okay so let's try out all of the examples again make sure everything's working so let's open the modal that works okay and close the modal yep that works okay and just check that the form is still submitting as well Yep, so that all looks good. So there we have a pretty much fully functioning modal button. The only thing left for you to do really at this point is to handle the uh, form submission, or it might just be a, a pop-up notification. So you might just want to have a close button or something like that, which just automatically closes the modal without taking any further action. I guess it depends on what you're trying to do with the modal when it pops up. So there we have our fully functional JavaScript modal, and hopefully you've seen that it's quite easy to code yourself and you don't need to import a separate library, and you do get the benefit of having full control of how the modal looks and what happens when you click the buttons, etc. So that's it for this video. Uh, just before you go, don't forget to subscribe to support the channel and for future video updates, and I'll see you next time.